What is up everybody and welcome back to the Mid-Level Media channel, your hub for everything physical media and entertainment. I am Ken here today to review and talk about the latest release from Arrow Video, Children of the Corn on 4K. So yeah, this one came out this week along with Legend, which I also have a review for up on the channel. Uh, you can go check that out if you haven't already. But before we get into talking about this movie, guys, because I've got some... I've got some thoughts on Children of the Corn. I want to ask that if you are not yet a subscriber of the Middle Level Media channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button for more great content. I do all kinds of stuff on this channel, mostly centered around the world of physical media. I do new 4K Blu-ray reviews. I do uh, Tuesday out and about videos where I take you all into the stores and show you all the new releases. I do the physical media report on Monday, uh, collection hauls, just all kinds of stuff physical media related. If you like Blu-rays, if you like 4Ks, hell, if you like DVDs, hit that subscribe button, I would appreciate it. And also guys, be sure to hit that like button. Every single like will help this video out and help this channel grow and I would definitely appreciate it. And guys, comment down below, what are your thoughts on Children of the Corn? Is it one of your favorite 80s horror films? Let me know in that comment section below. Did you pick up the Arrow release? I will be leaving the link for purchase in the description below. This movie was sent to me by Arrow Video. Uh, for review, so I want to thank them and MBD Entertainment for sending this to me in order to talk about it with you guys here today. So, and we're going to talk about the movie, we're going to talk about the 4K and the transfer, we're going to talk about the audio visual quality, the packaging, the features, we're going to talk about it all here today, guys. So, don't worry. But getting into this movie, guys, Children of the Corn came out in 1984. This was directed by Fritz Kurtz um, and is written by George Goldsmith based on. A Stephen King short story. It also stars Linda Hamilton, Peter Horton, Josh Franklin, and Courtney Gaines. And yeah, just getting into my initial thoughts on this movie, Children of the Corn, it's... I remember watching this movie at a very young age. Pretty sure I watched like the first five Children of the Corn. So for a while, they were all pretty interchangeable to me. I just knew they were kind of creepy kids in the cornfield movies. Up until a couple of years ago when I actually did revisit the first one, I always just assumed that they were they were good. They were good, creepy movies. That's how I remembered them in my young mind. Um, so when I revisited this a couple of years ago, I, I did not like it, uh, I'll be honest. And I wanted to go into it again a couple of years later with an open mind. Maybe I'll like it more this time. Maybe I can appreciate it for other things, which I do appreciate it for a few things. But to be honest, I still am not a huge fan of Children of the Corn. I, I haven't seen the sequels in forever. Maybe they get better. Maybe they get worse. But I don't know. It's something about this movie that it's just not scary to me. And it's, it's incredibly boring and bland like the entire way. Uh, through this film and again, I know that there's a lot of fans of this film a lot of people that do have nostalgia for it Like I said, I watched it when I was a kid. I remembered it being a scary film I mean just the premise alone is scary creepy kids are always scary, right? Not in this movie I don't know. I just not, I was not scared at all in this film except for maybe the opening of the movie which is the one thing that I do actually like about this movie, I like the way it opens, I like the way it sets up everything. Uh, not to spoil, but this is a town um, that is run by kids. All the adults have been taken out, or murdered, so to speak, um, by the children. And you see that in the beginning, in the form of this scene in a diner, where they lock the doors, they lock all the parents in. You got Isaac, creepy Isaac, sitting in the window with his little hat staring in and and you at that point you haven't heard him talk yet and that's kind of what brings him down a little bit but it's scary that whole initial setup is scary because it's unknown you don't know why they're doing what they're doing and once it all starts to be revealed and it's kind of religion based and they're like praying to corn gods in the fields then it just it, it, i start to take it a little bit less seriously and it's just it's just not scary anymore like it was in the beginning of the movie. There's no terror. There's no suspense. There's no feeling of dread throughout the entire film. You never get that same sense that you got in the beginning. Getting into some other things that I like. The score in this movie. The score by Jonathan Elias. I'm pretty sure is I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Is great. I love the horror score in this. I still find myself listening to this one. 
Um, even not being a fan of the movie, like I just think it's a really good creepy horror score. It kind of has the, that choir singing, um, and it just like ah, I don't know. It just I, I really love the score. I think it just um, it fits perfectly with this movie, and it's 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 one of the best things about it. Uh, whenever it starts playing, so I think that the score is phenomenal and a good horror score can really elevate a film. I think that this one absolutely is. It's just the material that it's fighting against um, isn't the best. So it doesn't elevate it that high, but I think it's better with the score than it would be without this score. It, great score. So Linda Hamilton also, I love Linda Hamilton, obviously Sarah Connor. It's cool seeing her in this movie. And I think that she does a really good job. This being one of her first roles, just bringing that physicality that she's really been known for in her career, bringing the charm, bringing the charisma. There's a scene in the beginning. It's very cute. She's in the hotel room. She's dancing, you know, young Sarah Connor, you know, naive Sarah Connor, kind of like she is in Terminator in the beginning um, as the waitress. And it's just, it's, it's cool to see her in that uh, before she transitions into the badass in, uh, in Terminator 2. Very charming. She's really good. It's no, it's no surprise that she went on to become a huge star and an action icon. Um, and yeah, this is definitely one of her first performances. I I'm pretty sure this was done before Terminator, even though both of those came out um, in the same year. So the other guy, Peter Horton, he's okay. He's serviceable. He's not terrible. It's just he's very bland and generic. Um, in his role. I also think this movie has some really good set design. Like I like the setting, the cornfields, the, the town, it looks really creepy um, and sinister just as they're like walking through it. So it, it does have that nice like horror, small town, farm town aesthetic to it. So I do appreciate it for that as well. Getting into the things that I don't like about this movie. And the main thing is it, you get this creepy kid set up, and like I said, creepy kids are always scary, right? When they're when they're done correctly, the kids in this just aren't scary. Like they just they don't they don't bring anything out of me. They're not menacing at all. They're sitting in a field with just big dumb expressions on their faces. The one guy that's supposed to be scary, Isaac, um, as soon as he opens his mouth to talk, he just sounds like a whining, sniveling uh, little snot-nosed brat. And but he has that hat on, and it's just. I don't know, he's, he's not scary to me. As soon as he opens his mouth, starts talking, it, it's not scary. Then Malachi, you know, he's just kind of like an emo teenager. Um, and then you got him and Isaac like fighting over power control. Uh, there's like a power struggle between the two of them that kind of comes into play like right in the middle of the third act. It's like you feel like we're getting ready to wrap up this, uh, this movie and then they have some kind of power struggle between them and then it, I don't know, it just it doesn't really fit in there. The kid actors, like the little kid actors, are supposed to be like your eyes into this world. Like you're supposed to be seeing things through their perspective is how the writer explained it um, in the special feature. I just think that they're terribly annoying. And yeah, I'm just not, I'm just not a fan, guys. Uh, ultimately, also, I just don't buy these kids being able to take over a town from these adults. I just don't think that it would have been possible for them to do so. So at, at the end of the day, guys, I'm, I'm just, I just don't really like this movie. I, I just don't really like it. It's not one of the big ones for me. I can't really see myself revisiting often. And again, it's one that I watched a couple years ago. I didn't like very much. And I knew when this 4K was announced, I was like, I'm just not a big fan of Children of the Corn. But I wanted to be excited for this because this cover is like awesome. Um, I really wanted to be excited for this. I really wanted to like it. I was going to give it a second chance. But it feels like every single time I want to try to give this movie a second chance, it just ends up not working out for me even more. It's like, I like this movie less now than I did before I watched it again. So as for a rating guys for the actual movie, I'll probably give it like a two, two and a half out of five. Like, I, I don't think it's, it's not like a terrible horror movie. It's just one that I think is incredibly boring. Like I was just bored to tears the entire time watching it. So getting into the actual like video transfer of this, this isn't a 185 one aspect ratio. And this did have the original 35 millimeter camera negative scanned in 4K and graded in HDR Dolby Vision. So as far as the actual transfer, I think there is there is a really good amount of grain in this. Uh, so again, if you're a grain hater, if you don't like your grain, you're gonna be disappointed. For me, I tend to accept it with these older films that's just the way it is and it kind of adds to the to the 80s, uh, 70s aesthetic for me, honestly, like I really don't mind it. 
Um, but there are quite a few moments that I notice of some real sharp and crystal clear images with some good facial detail and there's some nice uh, color saturation that's actually very noticeable uh, when you get to those cornfield sequences, you know, with the greens and stuff and the contrast and the blue skies, I do think it actually looks really good um, in those sequences. And it, But yeah, at the end of the day, guys, it's just a matter of are you a fan of grain? Can you tolerate it? Because there's a significant amount. There's one scene with the guy that's kind of looking off into the field and it that that one sequence looks very messy and, and not so great. At the end of the day for the transfer, it's solid. It's solid to me. I enjoyed it. I thought it was um, a decent transfer, a good transfer, just not a great transfer. Not up to the standards, really, to be honest, of what Arrow Video has been putting out this year. So good, but not great as far as transfer. So getting into the audio, this is a DTS HD Master Audio uh, 5.1 sound. So again, guys, I'm just using the sound bar. I don't have that set up yet, but everything sounded good for me. Good, uh, good sound throughout. And I mean, like I said, I love the score. So that worked perfectly with everything else throughout the movie as well. As far as the packaging, really nice packaging. But I was a little disappointed that we didn't get more of a, um, more of like the box set type treatment like we got with Legend with this one. Because I kind of thought that we were. And when I got this and saw that it was just a regular, you know, arrow slipcover, I was a little bit disappointed. But it is a really nice slipcover. It does have some really awesome artwork on it as well. You do get that reversible cover art. You do get some nice disc art too right here, guys, uh, with the, the cornfield in red. And yeah, I do, I do really like that original poster also of Stephen King's. Very simple. You got the creepy kids with the glowy eyes um, in the cornfields, and you got the Sith in the background, somebody holding it up, getting ready to getting ready to murder somebody. So I do like that right there, guys. So yeah. And then you also get this little booklet inside. Um, as well. It's a nice little booklet. It's got some cool artwork and images inside of it as well. So yeah, overall guys, it's it's good packaging, good presentation. So getting into the special features, guys, this is where it got a little bit tricky um, for me because I was looking and I didn't think at first that it actually had anything new to offer as far as special features, but I'm pretty sure um, you do get a lot of the ones that were included in the 2017 Arrow version because they did a Blu-ray release back in 2017. You get a lot of that stuff like the it was the 80s, an interview with actress Linda Hamilton. Um, you also get Harvesting Horror, The Making of Children of Corn. You get a new audio commentary here. You get the other ones from the other Arrow release. Um, but then here's the thing. Return to Gatlin. It was a brand new featurette revisiting the film's Iowa shooting locations. Stephen King on a shoestring. So there are two features in this uh, release that are not on the back of this Arrow uh, box set right here, this Arrow slipcover, and that is, and a child shall lead them. It's a 50 minute interview with two of the child actors that were in Children of the Corn, just two of the random uh, Children of the Corn. And you also get Field of Nightmares, which is a really great interview uh, with the writer of this film, um, George Goldsmith, and how he talks about uh, you know, basically writing this movie at the disapproval of Stephen King, which, you know, Stephen King is never satisfied, it feels like, with people adapting his work. Um, but yeah, they, they hired George Goldsmith, and he said that he changed a lot of things. Basically, Linda Hamilton's character um, and her boyfriend were not in the actual short story. It was very different, and those characters didn't exist. Also, the two small kids didn't exist. Uh, so he changed a lot of things and made it more cinematic, what he said. And Stephen King didn't like that. And he talks about how he had a phone call with him. Um, and Stephen King basically told him that he didn't know horror. And then he told Stephen King that he did not know screenwriting or or cinema. Yeah, that was a pretty candid interview with uh, with George. And I thought that was pretty, it was a pretty good interview. It's just very curious why they don't have these two special features on the back. And those two say Arrow Video when they show up. So it leads me to believe that they are new and they're in very nice, like crystal clear uh, 4K presentation. So I'm thinking that those are new special features with that one. But yeah, that is a nice change of pace if those are new because you don't usually get an hour of additional special features with an Arrow video release um, when they've already done the special features on a previous Blu-ray release. So that's actually pretty cool. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's over an hour, about an hour and 10 minutes of new special features in this release that they didn't even put on the back. So I, I'm not exactly sure 
uh, why that is. But with that, guys, we are done with this review of Children of the Corn. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on this classic 80s horror movie. Like I said, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, if you do plan on purchasing this, purchase it through my Amazon affiliate link in the description. It is $35. And as for if I, if I can recommend this or not, like I said, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the movie. The transfer is just okay. The special features are good. The packaging is okay. So I don't know if I can fully recommend it at the $35 price point. Maybe if it dropped down to like 20 or 25, I could. But um, yeah, if you really love this movie, maybe it's worth it. So yeah, link is in the description. Also, be sure to like this video and comment down below and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Turn on all bell notifications for future videos and we'll see you next time.